everyone, welcome to this video. This is actually amazing timing. So I was going to film how to transition your catacetinae into LECA and self-watering and not specifically LECA. If you want to use any other form of inorganic media, that is what this video is about. And lo and behold, Hillbilly Orchids sent me an email asking me about advice on how to transition catacetinae into LECA and self-watering and if I could be of any help. <laughs> That happened this morning and just in time because this video was on my schedule anyway. So thank you Hillbilly Orchids very much for your question. I hope that this answers every question that you have and anybody else who wants to try out Lekka self-watering with catacetinae and move away from using sphagnum moss or any other kind of water retentive media that needs to be refreshed every year, seeing as these orchids are very, very hungry. They need a lot of fertilizer and the media stays very very wet throughout their growing season and even though it is easy to be able to just take the bulbs at the end of the season cut off the old media store them and then pot them up when new growth start why not just leave them alone in the pot until they outgrow the pot because the roots do stay alive throughout their period of dormancy the roots don't necessarily die off the reason a lot of people chop off all the roots is because when the orchid grows a new growth of the season or several growths, every single growth will bring a new root system. It makes it very, very easy to store over the winters because these orchids can get into beast mode. They will get relatively large relatively quickly. But with inorganic media, you will not have to be doing that every single year. So seeing as we can repot these every single year, if we are in organic media, the transition is also relatively easy. There's just a few pointers that I would like to mention and point out just to clear things up a little bit. Because at this stage, this is my Jack of Diamonds, you can see it's starting a new growth that new growth is going to give me new roots. The reason I repotted it this time around was because I was dividing it and it had outgrown its pot. But previously it was in the pot a total of four years just growing, 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 as you would with any other orchid. If the orchid had not outgrown the pot and if I was not dividing it, it would stay in for another year or however long it took. So at this stage, catacetony are waking up in certain hemisphere in the world. And if you want to try this out, here are some of the pointers I would like to make mention. Well, first of all, when you transition the catacetony from organic media into inorganic media, you do need to remove everything. And this is where it is very advantageous because we can remove all the roots in one go just chop them off at the bottom and you've cleaned your orchid like a blitz clean the orchid is going to produce new roots and then you just put it in a pot the way I did right now I have a stake and I have a wire holding the bulbs in place hopefully soon I can remove the wire so that the orchid is stable in the pot just because the roots have taken over that job Another thing I highly recommend is to pot up your catacetinae into the middle of the pot. This gives you a lot more time than if you think you're taking the seedling bulbs in the back, thinking that the orchid will grow towards the center that you anticipate. The longer you leave a catacetinae orchid in a pot, the more growing points it will create, including at the back where the seedling bulbs were, and suddenly you could run into trouble. Because now that you have your orchid in the pot, you have a direct of growth that you think is happening well with catacetinae, chances are it's going to start a new growth in the back where the seedling bulbs are. Second direction of growth, we welcome that, but then you've run out of space and you're back to having to get it out of the pot and move it more to the middle of a bigger pot. But at this point, it is important to note that we don't want any water touching anything that is coming out of the orchid until such a time that this growth here is at least half the size leafed out and roots are in the pot. Well, with Lekka and self-watering, we always talk about the wicking efficacy of Lekka and Lekka should never really dry out. When you transition a catacetinae, that is the only exception that you need to have dry Lekka in the pot until such a time that it comes time to water. So all this Lekka is bone dry. It went in wet when I was doing the repotting because I store my Lekka in water, even when I'm not repotting. And in the meantime, it has completely dried out, which is great timing because my new growth is starting. 
when it starts new roots, it won't be touching any wet media. Take that into consideration if you store your lecker in water that you want to get ahead of the game and get your catacetinae into the pot so that the lecker can dry out before the new roots start. In the event that you're doing it and the new roots have already started growing, suspend the orchid above the lecker until such a time that the lecker dries out. I would highly recommend going against using any lecker straight out of the bag. It is dusty, it is dirty, even though these orchids are robust. You don't want all that muck in the pots once you start watering. Clean lecker, if you've got it dry, perfect. If you've got it wet, get your catacetinae into the pot with plenty of time before the roots grow and let that lecker dry out. Now, you can also see that at this point in time, my orchid is a little bit higher than the surface of the media and I've got my tweezers and I will be removing even more leca around the orchid now because as the roots grow I want them to go down straight away and not try to find their way over the leca. You don't want to be desiccating the roots. Sometimes leca can be very desiccating especially if you are in climates that are very very dry there's not enough humidity. And then you just leave your catacetinae be, let it grow its growth, let it grow its roots, and then fill up around those roots with dry lecker, ready for watering. And the question is always, well, I don't know about when I should start watering. Catacetinae roots need to be X, Y, Z long before I can start watering. In that case, it helps to have a clear pot. In my case, I do not have a clear pot. I just have a white mask, but I know how the roots perform on these orchids and I'm watching the bulbs. If the bulbs were to start shriveling a little bit too much, then I'm going to add a little water into the reservoir. I am not watering from the top. You can see my microfiber is bone dry. Everything here is dry, ready to go. So when the roots are long enough in the pot, and we're talking about the first stages of transition, then you fill around with dry lecker. Then you still don't water because we want to buy even more time and let the roots get even more established and stronger. And as long as our bulbs are not showing signs of stress or shriveling, there is no need to water, the energy resource is there. The next step when it comes to watering, if the bulbs were to start shriveling a little bit, then you just add water into the reservoir and let the wicking process begin. You can fill the reservoir to the top, but I would highly recommend that you are very conservative with the water because what you're not trying to do in the early stages of this new growth is to grow the growth. What you're doing with the first watering is avoiding more shriveling of the back bulbs. Eventually, it is then the roots that are mature enough to take up the water and you will notice if your reservoir is empty by that time it is time to water and stay with watering from below in the reservoir if you are growing in semi hydroponics where you do not have a mask for a water reservoir then submerge the pot to the level of the holes so that there is a wicking process from the bottom up do not water from the top. Again, we're protecting new roots that are coming out of the growth. So just keep that in mind if you are in semi-hydro. Let the water go through the holes by putting the pot in a saucer and let it wick up until it is really go time for watering. And you will know that if you're in a clear pot that the roots will have reached the bottom of the pot and you will be able to see they are long enough and they are ready for water. On the other hand, if you are in a pot like mine where I cannot see what the roots are doing, you need a reference of the previous bulb. You take the growth that you have and then you make sure that the leaves are above the oldest growth that you have. So it doesn't matter which species you're dealing with. You could be dealing with a little more small compactor catacetinae. If you take your reference from the bulb before and let that growth at least get up with the leaves to the top and leaf out, that is your reference for then to start watering. And still keep in mind you're watering from below just to make sure that the roots aren't drowned out right at the beginning. Instead, they are gonna be searching for the water by watering from underneath. When it comes to fertilizing, the first watering, if you're just avoiding the shriveling of the bulbs, use plain water. You're not going to be fertilizing anything just yet. If you're avoiding any shriveling, plain water. The first fertilizing happens when you see that your growth is up here, already reaching the size of the pseudobulb prior, and you see the roots nicely established in the pot. That is when you add your first fertilizer. 
In the beginning, go gentle. Yes, these orchids will want a lot more fertilizer down the line, but this is their first taste, so to speak, of fertilizer. And just be gentle with it and see how everything responds. On a big catacetinae, I would say 160 parts per million is ideal because then you will be doubling that by the time the season comes and it is full on grow and fertilizer time. I don't go above 300 parts per million with my catacetinae at any stage. I consider this one a big catacetinae. I have a black pearl that is even bigger than this and they get 300 parts per million. Some people also put in slow release fertilizer into their media, whether it is organic or inorganic, and you can do that but be very very careful with that. I have unfortunately made a mistake by putting in slow release fertilizer into my pots and then the problem was when I watered too soon to stop the shriveling of the bulbs, not the watering of the orchid, just the shriveling of the bulbs, I watered a little bit too soon and all the salts from that slow release fertilizer accumulated on the top of my media and with that, new roots that were coming out from that one catacetinae, they burnt. And I'm still fighting to make that orchid survive. I'm not even sure if it will. So be very, very careful if you consider putting in slow release fertilizer. Personally, I have stopped doing that. If you've been watching my videos about the dividing of this orchid and the black pearl, you may have noticed there is no slow release fertilizer in there. It doesn't mean that at a later stage, I may not add some on the top of the media. But at this point in time when the orchids are being transitioned, I would watch the pot and get to know the orchid before adding slow release fertilizer and do all the fertilizing via the regular fertilizer that you use, be it water soluble or liquid. Now you can see I've created that little hollow where I want the roots to go down into the media and then I will just fill up with LECA. And this orchid can stay in this pot because it's positioned in the center for at least two or three more years. Even though the bulbs are chubby, the base is not. And that is what I'm working with here, the base, just to make sure that my orchid can stay in the pot long term. As far as transitioning goes, that is all there is to it. I hope that I made everything quite clear and easy to understand. Let me know in the comments if there was something that was a little bit confusing. I know that the subject of the roots and when to water can be the biggest confusion because once they start growing, then it's just gung-ho, one of the easiest orchids to grow. It's just this first little stage that could be a bit of a tiptoe game. But if you leave yourself a little bit of a root ball at the end for the eventuality of any form of shriveling, then you're okay, you can still make sure that your orchid gets a little bit of water without affecting the new roots that are coming through. So that is how you transition a catacetinae from organic into inorganic media, leaving the orchid stable in the pot long term and getting it started and as to when to start fertilizing. I will revisit this subject when this orchid is much, much further along with its growth. And at that point, I can better explain the real green light for watering consistently and keeping that orchid well and truly fertilized to get a fabulous growth. I appreciate your time. Use the comments. Let me know if all of this was easy to understand. And I apologize in advance if there was something that sounded like I was contradicting myself. I'd be happy to clarify that in the comments. Have yourselves a very, very beautiful day. We were initially photobombed by Tolumnia pomegranate over there that is blooming on her two branches. The beautiful day is on one condition though, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.